Interest rates have just gone up. Again. Again. Um, and Philip Lowe's in the news. Philip Lowe's the governor of the Reserve Bank. He's the one in charge of interest rates. And he's been saying a lot of stuff, um, and some of it's been pretty weird. What's he been saying recently? Oh, well, Matt, I've got a really good quote here that I feel like uh, is one of our favourites of Philip Lowe's recent uh, things. So he says, the issue that many central banks have been worried about, and I include us in this, is that this period of high inflation leads the workforce to say, well, inflation's high. I need full compensation for that. And let's say that we all accept the idea and inflation is 7%. I should be compensated for that in my wages. And he goes on to say, if that were to happen, what do you think inflation would be next year? 7% plus or minus a bit. And then we've got to get compensated for that 7%. And that is what happened in the 70s and 80s. It turned out to be a disaster. Wow. Worried about wages going up by 7%. He is. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty crazy to begin with, right? Well, yeah. I mean, I'd love a 7% wage who, rise. But like, Who do you know had a 7% wage rise no recently? One. No one. What uh, Philip Lowe's referring to here and what he's concerned about is that we've got a wage price spiral. What is a wage price spiral? Let's start there. A wage price spiral is where prices go up for some reason and workers go, well, the stuff I can buy, I can't buy as much stuff because it's more expensive. I need higher wages. So they demand higher wages and get them. All right, and then business go, oh, wages have gone up. That's a cost to my business. I need to put my prices up. So they put up prices and then workers go, oh, prices have gone up again. I need higher wages. And then basically they follow each other in a spiral. So Eliza, do we currently have a wage price spiral? No, we don't currently have a wage price spiral. And it's been in the news a lot. I mean, wages have been declining over the last decade or so. We're talking about real wages, right? So um, when inflation runs faster than wages, your real wage is actually shrinking. The amount of stuff you can buy gets smaller. When your wage is running faster than inflation, the amount of stuff you can buy gets bigger. And at the moment, inflation is way ahead of um, wages. In fact, I've got a graph here that shows wages and um, inflation over the last, what, about 30 years? And we can see the green patches um, are all the times when real wages were getting bigger. So the vast majority of the time, in fact, most of the time, wages are going faster than inflation. Your real wage is rising. There's a couple of little spikes around the GFC and then around 2013, 2014. And then if you look right at the end, we have where we are at the moment. Wages are increasing not as fast as prices, which is why it's red, right? And it's actually a huge spike. So yeah, no, not only have we not been seeing a wage price spiral, but we're definitely not seeing one right now. Wages are lagging significantly behind price increases. And that's why people are feeling that cost of living squeeze. Let's face it, the rules are basically rigged against workers at the moment. I mean, the government's introduced some IR laws that might change that a bit. Union density is incredibly low and union power within workplaces to collectively bargain for wage rises is, has been kind of steadily decreasing over the last decade. Wages have been incredibly low over the last decade. They've been lucky to be sort of pushing two, two and a half percent. And, and here we've got the Reserve Bank governor worried about 7% a year. Yeah, so, I mean, that's his first mistake. People are not getting 7% in uh, wage rises. So Philip Lowe in his, in his statement was talking a bit about, well, you know, if, if prices go up by 7%, which is what they're going up at the moment, um, and then wages go up by 7%, then that'll cause prices to go up by 7%. Is that true? No, that's, that's not true at all because wages don't make up the whole cost of production. So maybe we can use an example to demonstrate this. For example, uh, say you are uh, an employer at a tin tomato factory. Yep. Yeah. So, so I've got a big factory, lots of machines. I buy tomatoes, I buy tins, I have workers making tin tomatoes. Yeah. So wages don't actually uh, don't make up 100 percent of the cost of producing the tin tomatoes, because, as he said, you need to buy machines, you have to pay for electricity, you have to get the tins, buy the tomatoes. So if the wages for your workers are going up by 7 percent. So my workers got a 7 percent pay rise. It, I'm a great boss. One yeah. of the best in Australia at the moment. For sure. Um, then the cost of production doesn't go up by 7% because wages are only 50% of the cost of producing the tin Yeah, tomatoes. so my costs have only gone up at 3.5% if wage bill is half my um, cost. If you were passing on the 7% 
increase to prices, you'd actually be pocketing more money than you're putting additional money than you'd be putting out in wages. So when Philip Lowe says a 7% wage rise will lead to a 7% increase in prices, that could only occur if firms are actually making a nice profit gain. Yeah, which leads us into the next point. <laughs> yeah, so Australia, we've done some Australia Institute research that has shown that when we look at, so when prices go up, people gain, right? So if prices go up, that means that firms are making more money. And some of that can go to wages and some of that can go to profit. And we had a look um, with our research to find out who was benefiting. And what we found was, is that 60% of the benefit of these increased prices was ending up in profit and only 15% was ending up as wages. So even looking at it from the profit wage point of view, it's really clear that profits are what's driving inflation, not wages. So we don't have a wage price spiral that Philip Lowe's really worried about. We actually have a profit price spiral. That is profits are increasing prices, not wages. Which is interesting because he is not saying anything about businesses tightening their belts. You hear no. nothing about that. What we're, we're hearing him say is, is he's worried about workers getting higher wages and, and workers aren't getting higher wages Wages, but businesses are getting higher profits. The RBA government being unconcerned with businesses profits but very concerned about wages isn't a new thing is it? No. If we go back to the very beginning of economics really, um, a guy called Adam Smith. Now economists will understand who Adam Smith is. Adam Smith was basically the, one of the founding fathers of economics um, and he is beloved by free marketeers all over the world um, in particular. For the invisible hand. For the invisible, he came up with the, the concept of the invisible hand. Now, um, uh, Adam Smith wrote many things and one of the things he wrote was quite relevant right now. He said, our merchants and master manufacturers complain much of the bad effects of high wages on raising the price and therefore lessening the sale of, of their goods. They say nothing concerning the bad effects of high profits. They were silent to the regard of the pernicious effects of their own gains. They complain only of those of other people. So basically what Adam Smith is saying is, is that even way back in the 1700s when he was writing this, um, businesses were very quick to complain that high wages led to high prices, but they were very silent when it came to high profits leading to high prices. Age old trend. <laughs> So Philip Lowe has just increased interest rates again. It's now higher than it has been for 10 years. Is this an effective policy for stopping inflation? Right now. Right now. Right now. Uh, well, no. I mean, we know that inflation is being primarily driven by supply side factors. So, you know, uh, global prices for gas and um, things like that going up because of the invasion of Ukraine. You know, all the natural disasters in Australia have put uh, a limitation on the supply of fresh foods and vegetables. And these are the, the goods and services that we're seeing um, the prices rise the most on. So are interest rates gonna lower the world price of oil? No, Are they not. gonna lower the world, world, world price of gas? No. Are they gonna make more <laughs> lettuces available and more fruit and veg available? I mean, it would be incredible if it could, a, a miracle, but no, I don't think so. Because the whole point about interest rates is about reducing the amount of uh, purchasing power or money that people have to buy things in the economy, um, to put a dampener on demand. And, you know, as we've just mentioned, this has primarily been driven by supply. So it's making a bunch of poor people and people with not a lot of financial buffer suffer and not be able to purchase lots of things essential things that they need to survive. Um, but it's not doing very much about the price increases that will continue as a result of supply issues. Yeah, so these supply issues will eventually resolve themselves. And when they do, the oil price will come down, the gas price will come down, lettuces will again flood the market and other fruit and veg, and those prices will come down. And interest rates aren't going to be a factor in that. No. Um, now, the Reserve Bank Governor has also got himself into a lot of trouble recently because people have claimed that he's promised that interest rates won't rise till 2024. And here it is in 2022 and they've gone up by 3% and they're now higher than they have been in 10 years. It's shocking that forecasting has not been particularly accurate, right? No, Matt? no. As an economist, you know what they say? Uh, economic forecasters exist to make astrologers look good. We know that they're terrible at it. The Reserve Bank apparently knows it's terrible at it, but it felt that it really wanted to give a date and it, and it gave that date and people took them at their word. Um, and now they're very upset with Philip Lowe. Exactly, he apologized, he said. I'm certainly sorry if people um, listened to what we'd said and then acted on that 
what we'd said and now regret what they had done. So that's, um, that's regrettable. Wow, we've had some really good apologies, political apologies lately, but I think that's one of the better ones, isn't Very it? Very eloquent. Um, so basically he's saying that as head of the Reserve Bank, one of the august institutions of Australia, if you listen to me about interest rates, a thing I'm in charge of, yep. and uh, well, I'm sorry that you listened to me. Clearly I wasn't the kind of person you should be listening to. No, you shouldn't listen to the main authority on monetary policy about the predictions they have about monetary policy. <laughs> There's always media about increased interest rates. And when you're reading about it, when you're watching it on TV, when you're listening to it on the radio, remember, if you hear the Reserve Bank governor and the Reserve Bank saying, you know, workers have to tighten their belts. Workers have to take a real wage cut. That that's actually in workers' interests, that in the long run, you'll be better off. Just remember that at the same time that he's worried about this wage outbreak, Profits are soaring, okay? And that this current inflation is mostly being driven by increases in profits, not increases in wages. Thanks for watching. If you like Australia Institute analysis, we've started a newsletter and it collates uh, news, analysis, reports that we've been writing over the last fortnight and it goes straight to your inbox. If you want to sign up, find the link on the screen.